Welcome everyone to the Connor Health Foods online seminar. Thank you all for joining us today. I am your host, John Connor. I am the certified nutritionist at Connor Health Foods. I am here once again to hopefully lead you out of the darkness and into the light of good health and nutritional practices. So let's get started. How important is balance? It is extremely important between our physiology and our body chemistry. It is extremely important to keep our bodies in balance. And we're going to take a look at some ways on how our bodies can get out of balance and ways that we can bring it back in balance. And it's not as difficult as you think. There are steps that we can take in order to find balance. Right here in the middle, you see a normal functioning immune system. On the left-hand side, in the blue, you'll see a suppressed immune system, more susceptible to things like infections. And on the right-hand side, in the red, you'll see an overactive immune system where autoimmune or inflammatory diseases can come about. Immunity is the body's ability to fight off harmful microorganisms known as pathogens that invade it. The immune system produces antibodies or cells that can deactivate pathogens. Some examples of pathogens are things like fungi, protozoans, bacteria, and viruses. The body has three main lines of defense. The first one is known as the innate immune system. This is the body's first line of defense against pathogens by using physical or chemical barriers, such as the skin, which protects the body against a pathogenic invasion. Sweat has chemicals which can kill different pathogens. Tears and saliva both produce an enzyme called lysozyme, which can render antigens harmless. And then you have mucus, which traps pathogens and can be flushed out. And then you have stomach acid which destroys pathogens. And let me remind you that if you're taking any kind of antacid or acid reducer, you are lowering the defense of the stomach acid destroying the pathogen. So keep that in mind. If by some chance the pathogen gets past the first line of defense, the barrier, the innate immune system, it can then rely on its second line of defense. And this is usually where an infection may occur. And the second line of defense is an inflammatory response. This can cause redness due to the capillary dilation resulting in increased blood flow. It's trying to get to the side of the area where the pathogen has damaged the, the tissue. Heat due to the capillary dilation resulting in increased blood flow is trying to get to the site quicker. Swelling due to the passage of plasma from the bloodstream into the damaged tissue to heal the damaged area from the pathogen, and pain, which ultimately is the result of the swelling. If the first two lines of defense are not enough, then the pathogen will head to the body's last line of defense, and that is the immune system. The immune system recognizes, attacks, destroys, and remembers each and every pathogen that enters the body. It does this by making specialized cells and antibodies that render the pathogens harmless. A good example of this would be chicken pox. That's why the, most people only get chicken pox one time. The body remembers that virus, and then if you come in contact with someone who has chicken pox, the body has already made antibodies and specialized cells which can kill off and protect from getting chicken pox again. Unlike the first line and the second line, the immune system differentiates among pathogens from bacteria to viruses and so forth. For each type of pathogen, the immune system produces cells that are specific for that particular pathogen. One way we can come in contact with pathogens is through our digestive system. And if pathogens start attacking our digestive tract, this can result in what's called gut dysbiosis. One of the physical conditions in the body that can lead to immune dysregulation is something known as gut dysbiosis or a gastrointestinal imbalance. Dysbiosis refers to a state of imbalance amongst the colonies of microorganisms within the body. When your gut becomes dysbiotic or out of balance, this means that the bad germs begin to edge out the good germs. 
when the bad germs start to take over the basic biological functions such as digestion, they begin to break down and symptoms such as diarrhea and constipation begin to appear. But it's important to remember that not all symptoms of gut dysbiosis are obvious. Because gut dysbiosis can lead to a number of physiological problems throughout the body, it can be responsible for symptoms such as depression and asthmatic wheezing. Our digestive system and our immune system are linked together. When colonies of friendly bacteria are unable to populate the gut due to gut dysbiosis, a number of physiological problems can come about. One of them is known as leaky gut syndrome or intestinal hyperpermeability. This means that the normal barrier function of the intestinal mucosa, the lining of the small intestine, becomes compromised and the presence of microscopic holes that are caused by the bad germs appear. These microscopic holes permit substances normally contained within the intestinal walls to leak into the circulatory system. It's now in our bloodstream. Now we have under digested food particles and microbes leaking into the immune cells and the circulatory system. The immune system views these partially digested foods as foreign invaders rather than molecules for our nourishment. The immune system then launches an attack on everyday food and you get the symptoms of food allergies. Now that we see how our bodies can become dysregulated and out of balance, how do we get our body back in balance again so that these problems won't happen? One way is with Pneumaticus Colostrum Formulas Immuno PRP Spray and the Immuno G PRP. There's several aspects to colostrum that most people don't really think about the nutritional components, the growth factors, the immune factors, the nutritional fats, the vitamins and minerals, and the proline-rich polypeptides, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. The colostrum that is used in the Amino G PRP is 100% pure bovine colostrum and is collected within the first 16 hours after birthing. It is a natural whole food that provides a rich source of IgG and the PRPs, which are going to help both digestion and immune function. It also supplies protein, immune factors, growth factors, vitamins and minerals to ensure healthy and vitality naturally. Scientific studies have shown that colostrum supports the human immune and cytokine systems. Bovine colostrum is actually 40 times richer in immune factors than human colostrum and is biologically transferable to humans. The backbone behind colostrum are known as proline-rich polypeptides or simply PRPs. They are tiny information carrying proteins with amazing adaptability. The reason for this is because in times of intense physical stress they enhance immune activity by promoting the production of cytokines. In the opposite situation when there's a healthy immune system reacting to environmental factors through the cytokine production, PRP sends signals to the cell receptor sites to decrease the production of cytokines in order to balance the immune system. In short, PRPs regulate immune function. Some benefits of the Immuno PRP spray is the fact that it has the PRPs that come from fresh colostrum, supports the immune system, so it keeps in balance so it's not overreacting or underreacting. It supports healthy cognitive function. It promotes cytokine production and balancing. And it supports the reduction of allergy and autoimmune symptoms. Colostrum also contains growth factors. This can help signal growth, repair, and regeneration of tissue. An example of this is the epithelial growth factor which is commonly found in some cosmetics. This can help with regeneration of skin and maintenance of skin elasticity. Colostrum is believed to enhance the regeneration of stomach and gut cells and reduce the intestinal permeability to bacteria and viruses that are associated with leaky gut syndrome. Now the question is 
Has colostrum and the PRPs been thoroughly researched and is it safe? There have been over 2,000 published studies done on colostrum and its benefits. In fact, in the U.S., colostrum was the mainstream doctor's choice to treat RA or rheumatoid arthritis. Before penicillin came along, colostrum was the go-to product to treat viral and bacterial infections in mainstream medicine. Thank you all for joining us on this episode of Connor Health Foods Get Well series. If you have any further questions, comments, please drop us a line. We have even more information on the products and the topics that we talked about today. We'll see you next time at Connor Health Foods Get Well series.